Good morning everyone. My name is Carla and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Bean Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch but also other crafts that I'm involved in and a little bit of life thrown in. Uh, today is my floss tube number 79. It is Sunday. It is January 24th and I want to say a big welcome to all of you. Having a little uh, David's tea again this morning. Um, so it's been a week, <laughs> a week of really, uh, ups and downs for me and, um, yeah, and I'm just feeling really kind of, uh, crazy and a little bit out of, uh, out of control of things, I guess. Um, but before I get into that again, I want to say welcome to anybody who's new. I hope you uh, like what you see. This may not be the best week to um, use as a judgment because I'm just a little bit all over the place today. Um, had hair drama this morning, had eyelash drama this morning already. Um, yeah, so I'm just, you know, in one of those kinds of moods. Uh, for those of you who are uh, continuing subscribers, thank you so much for coming back and bearing with me today um, if things are nuts. And um, yeah, so okay, so this week, um, as we all know, uh, it was um, the presidential inauguration, which for me was something that was really great um, and something I had been looking forward to. Um, I was at work, so I watched... You know, with my friend at work, we had um, different YouTube and news things on, and so we were paying attention to it all morning. Um, obviously, being in California, it was kind of like the big speeches and stuff were done earlier in the morning. Um, but all of that good, happy stuff was tempered by the fact that uh, this week I got a call from uh, my a nurse, the head nurse at my mom's um at my mom's uh, nursing home and my mom tested positive for COVID. So I told you guys last week that she had gotten her first uh, vaccine. So that was good. Um, <clears throat> it's just been kind of an emotional roller coaster, to be quite honest. Um, and it's just crazy. So I've talked about this a little bit before, but just to recap, you know, my mom does live in a nursing home. And, um, they, at the beginning of the pandemic in March, they shut down, um, or locked down very quickly. And I was really, really pleased with how, what their response had been and just how protective they were being, they were being. Um, and of course then all of this stuff just dragged on and on and on and on longer than any of us thought it would. Um, they had no cases of COVID, um. I think they had one or two um, employees who tested positive who then, you know, were not there while they were quarantining, etc. But they had no residents who were ill. And um, then, you know, this month they started vaccinating. Um, anyway, so like a couple weeks ago. They had three cases and they were being isolated and everything was fine and you know and then my mom um, was vaccinated uh, like a week and a half ago and um, we got a robocall at that time that they had 17 people who um, had tested positive who again were being isolated in a different um, wing or different group of rooms really they don't have separate wings but they were in a different area and they were having different staff take care of them etc and then and as I said my mom got got her first vaccine and then last week when I got the call from her nurse um, she had tested positive and at that point 40 of the 67 residents have tested positive and this was last week so as of this week it could be the entire place I don't know um, so it's scary um the good news is my mom has no symptoms she doesn't have a fever this is even as of yesterday um my sister-in-law stacy i talk about her all the time she's kind of like our advocate general for our little family here because she is very very good at um 
calling and talking to the administrators and talking to nurses and getting kind of that scoop. Um, I'm not good at that. Like when they first called me, I didn't think to ask any questions because I was just kind of like, eh. And um, so anyway, so Stacy's kind of been the one who's called and talked to the nurses for us and stuff because we can't, we can't get anything out of my mom because... Um, so when my mom heard this news, she immediately became extremely upset and agitated and is convinced she's going to die. And my mom is bipolar anyway. So like this whole, this whole time of being, um, separated from her family and even separated from like friends and stuff at where she lives and not being able to do the fun activities that they always do has not been good on her mental state. I mean, she's gone through waves where she's perfectly fine and then she's gone through waves where she's been depressed and, you know, it's, it's hard and, um, you know, it's hard to weigh that keeping somebody healthy physically versus the healthy mentally. And I mean, the physical has to take precedent at this time. Um, but anyway, when she was told that she had tested positive, she basically just like freaked out and she has been really upset and um, I hate to use the word disruptive but disruptive um, and just requiring a lot of attention and um, so and she also because of all her physical stuff that she has anyway she ha tends to have neuropathy and have pain in her hands and her legs and stuff like that so she does have pain medication and they've been giving her pain medication and letting her sleep a lot um, because she's just so agitated and upset and screaming that she's not going to make it. And again, she has no symptoms. She doesn't have a fever. She's not, doesn't have any kind of respiratory problems. Her, her blood oxygen is at 95%, which is what it always is. So she is not having any COVID symptoms, although she did test positive for COVID. She is isolated in a room. Um, I guess her roommate from before um, this happened tested positive and was moved to a different room. So by the time my mom tested positive, there was nobody else in her room. So she, she is in her room by herself and she, you know, so physically, I guess she's doing fine. She, like I said, she doesn't have any symptoms. Um, they keep them in isolation. I mean, at this point, everybody, I guess, has to be in isolation because practically everybody is positive there. Um, but then they'll test again in two weeks, which would be a week, um, and if she tests positive again, I mean, I guess they keep going. Um, they said if she starts showing any kind of symptoms, then they treat the symptoms. Um, she did, as I said, have that first vaccine. Um, I've read a couple things, a couple articles and stuff that said that that vaccine will help um, make a milder illness if you do get sick. So I'm hoping that that's that's what it is. Um, I guess she'll, I don't know if she'll still get the second vaccine. If, I mean, if she doesn't, if she tests negative, then I don't know if she gets the second vaccine right away or if she still has to wait. I don't know how that all works. Um, but it has been a very scary week. I've talked to her a couple times, but again, because she has been taking some pretty, um, intense medicine. She's been kind of out of it. I mean, she's called me a couple times. I've called her. Um, a lot of the times that my brother and I have called her, she's just not answering the phone because she's asleep. Um, which is why then Stacy has called the nurses for us and, and she's talked to a nurse, uh, my mom's nurse, the person who's working with her, uh, at least twice, two or three times. And you know, and the nurses said she doesn't have a fever. I mean, Stacy called yesterday last or yesterday evening, so this is up to date news. As of yesterday evening, she had no temperature and no breathing problems, no respiratory anything. Her blood oxygen was high. Her big thing right now is that she's just extremely upset and agitated and um, yeah, I mean, that's it. So she's not feeling great, but I think a lot of it is just her emotional state. So I did post something on Instagram and thank you so much for everybody who commented and sent, you know, sent love and prayers and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, I hope, I hope we all get through this. Um, I'm scared. 
Uh, my mom is 79, um, and she's almost 80. She's going to be 80, 80 in April. So, you know, she is a very, um, in a very uh, weak category as far as COVID. Um, she's not a super healthy person. Um, but, you know, so far, not good. You know, she doesn't have any symptoms. So I'm hoping that she just stays asymptomatic um, and then tests negative next week. And then, I mean, I guess they're going to still have to keep her isolated because the place is running rampant with the the, the germs or the virus or the whatever. Um, it's just, it's crazy. Like I said, nothing up to a month ago and then like the whole place, um, right as the vaccine comes in. So that has been pretty scary. I mean, I've had a couple days where... You know, I'm feeling fine, and then all of a sudden, I'm crying because I'm scared that I'm going to lose her. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to lose her eventually, right? Because nobody's going to live forever, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, so it's been a little intense. <laughs> um, has it affected my crafting? I don't know. I still stitched every day, but, you know, I just, I'm in, I'm in the mood where I kind of want to just hibernate. I've done some organizing of my craft area, which, um, I'm in that place where, you know, when you start organizing stuff and it gets worse before it gets better because you have to move everything out. I'm kind of in that and I feel like I'm being, um, surrounded and swallowed by stuff. <laughs> um, I have some boxes that have to go out to the trash and... Um, and I hate taking stuff out to the trash because I live in a second floor apartment and so I have to go out and go downstairs and come back upstairs and so I, I try not to do it too often. I usually take the trash out when I go to work because I have to go down anyway. But um, I may have to do a trash run this afternoon just to get some of these boxes out of here because yeah, I'm feeling a little bit surrounded by, by the crap. Um, okay, so that's enough of the non stitchy stuff but it just kind of gives you an idea of where my head's been at um this whole week just yeah i'm just out of it i haven't sent out any of my hanukkah giveaway gifts um i just haven't been in the mental health space to do it and honestly the idea of having to go to the post office right now is just like paralyzing <laughs> so um, it will get done. I promise you guys will get it before, uh, before next Hanukkah. Um, no, but hopefully in the next uh, week or two, I will be able to get everything uh, bagged up and all the addresses on and make that run to the post office. But just, you know, please bear with me with my mental state right now is just, you know, I'm taking care of myself and taking care of my cat and trying to keep up with the dishes and things like that. And other than that, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to work and coming home and doing what I have to do, but maybe not much more than that. So, oh, I almost went to go grab this candle to drink instead of my tea. Okay, so back into the stitching stuff. And thank you for bearing with me through all that. Um, let's see. I did have a new start because of the inauguration. Um, I think uh, Kyla Rolodex Stitcher started kind of, um, I don't even know what the tag was, and not inaugural stitch day Sal 2021, inaugural stitch day 2021, Sal, something like that. I don't know. Um, and a lot of people were doing it or they were pulling out whips that they already had that were kind of patriotic themed or that were you know, change and, you know, all these like good sentiments that they wanted to commemorate the inauguration. And, um, I didn't want to be left out. So I have one patriotic chart. I'm not a big patriotic stitcher. It's not that I'm not emotionally patriotic. I just, as a, as a stitch icon, stitch thing, you know, it's just, I'm not attracted to, you know, all of the red, white, and blue stuff. But this one chart, I really was um, uh, drawn to from the very beginning when I first started stitching. So I decided to pull it out and do the inaugural start. Um, now, because I didn't plan this, it kind of like messed up my, um, my time decision wheel, focus pieces for the month kind of thing, which 
was also a little bit messed up this month because I'm under a deadline for um, the Baby Yoda project. So um, I still am liking that system and I've still been spinning my wheel, but then I've kind of been ignoring it too, you know, and it is what it is as far as that goes. Um, I will show you the projects I picked for February next week because it still will be January, right? I think it'll be the 31st next Sunday. Um, anyway, so I did do this new start. It's called Starburst and Stripes Forever by Cherry Lane Designs. And um, I just really liked that it was, you know, it's kind of almost all st specialty stitches. There are a few like cross stitches, little tiny cross stitches in there. But most of it is these big Starbursts. Um, I don't know if you would call them like Algerian eyelids. Or you, I, I don't know if the, the stitch has a name, but they're kind of fun to do. It reminds me of doing the county canvas pieces, you know, having this extra like stitch thing. So I'm doing this on a piece of 14 count um, Fiddler's Cloth, which it's an, I don't know if Fiddler's Cloth is like a whole separate thing, if it's just a type of Ada, you know, that's kind of like this rustic-y look. Um, but I thought that that would look good, and it does suggest to not use a white fabric because you want the white stitches to show up. And they still are kind of hard to see, but up close they look good. And um, the glosses that I picked, um, it was all charted in DMC, but I picked some over dyes that kind of were similar. Um, except for the white, I just used the B5200, and then I didn't have anything for this color that um, that was close but for the, the lighter red and the two blues I'm using some over dyes and I think these are all Queen City um, glosses and then they had like a light taupey gray and instead of using that one I chose this so that's how far I got on it. I worked down because I wanted to get into the red. <laughs> and I am liking it. Okay, I'm going to change the color here and see if it makes a difference. Uh, no. Is that one better? That's definitely not. I'm trying to see what looks most normal. I think it was best what I had it on before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Little experiment there. But anyway, so I worked on this for uh, two days. I worked, I started it on Tuesday night, um, which was the night I found out about my mom. So my headspace that night was just crazy. Um, so kidding this up and, and starting it and everything was actually a good thing to do. And then I worked on it Wednesday for the inauguration. And as you can, I, well, I hope you can see the little white things are all in here. Um, but yeah, I'm really am enjoying this. It's just, it's fun. Once I f did the first one, which I had to like kind of pull out three times because I was counting it wrong. Um, once I counted it right and figured out how to do them, then they're, they're super easy to do. And I love how it makes the little hole in the middle and it's just really pretty. Um, so I enjoyed that. That was my new start. Um, and this will probably now go get set aside until, um, maybe I'll pull it out maybe in, um, June so that maybe I can get it done before 4th of July. Um, I'm not in any rush on it, but I did enjoy starting that. Okay, other than that, I only, well, I have three other whoops. Um, I worked on um, Village Bookstore just a little bit last Sunday. And I also wanted to try, so, Instead of showing you this haul, I'm going to show you here. I wanted to get, like, a um, giant hoop 
to use in my frame um, because I thought it would be just better to have a bigger hoop um, so I wouldn't have to move it as much. And so I ordered this from Joann's. You know, you have coupons for Joann's. So it's these are not cheap. This was like $20, $27 I want to say, but I had like a 50% off coupon or something like that. Anyway, um, I didn't realize it was going to be quite so thick. It's like super wide, but it's, uh, my biggest hoop that I had before was like a 12 inch hoop and I, and this one I think is 17 or 18 inches and I thought, Oh, well, it'll be a little bit bigger. You know, my brain was not uh, connecting with the idea of the circle that, you know, a 17 inch circle or 18 inch. I'm not even sure what this is. Yeah, 17. Um, it's a huge, huge difference. So anyway, this is my hoop. Um, and I worked just a little bit on, right there, on Village Bookstore. So it still doesn't look exciting yet. It's not in anything that looks like anything. It's still just black leaves and starting to get a little bit of sky in here. But, um... I got another floor stand. So I have the Universal Floor Craps, Crap, Craps, not Crap Stand, Crap Stand. Ah! Okay. Start over. Universal Craft Stand, Edmunds. Um, that is the one I keep saying I made friends with and it holds the hoop and everything like that. Um, because I started to like that one, I decided to go ahead and get the master one that has the U that is supposed to be able to hold. Um, Q snap type things and everything. Um, so I got it, I put it together. I'm gonna have to make friends with that one too. Um, the way the way it's made, it doesn't hold the frames very well because it's got these two pieces that come over the bar that you can tighten and loosen, but the bar comes up like halfway up. So there's not there's not very much room for the frame to sit in before it gets it hits this middle thing um so i have some ideas of what i can do to make adjustments to um sort of rig it you know so that it works better um but for right now the the other one is working fine with the hoops and um i think what i have in mind is i would kind of like to just be able to put my project on um the stand and just leave it now, actually, because this hoop is so big, I might be able to use this one in the new frame and just leave it there and cover it when I'm not using it. Um, but I haven't really tried working with it yet. I was tired. I, Yeah, I didn't want to fuss with it. So I have things to play with as far as that goes. Okay, so I did a little bit of that one, and then um, I worked one night. Um, I uh, spun a free whip, and I worked on Night Walk Down. Um, by the blue flower, which is my black cat birthday sow. Is this going to get done before my next birthday in August? I don't know. I mean, I'm enjoying it, so it's no hardship to stitch on it. It's just, it seems like it's not going super, super fast. Um, on this flower and got it done basically and in doing it realized that I had made a mistake in the counting on this this stem and so this little section here was like one stitch too far down so I ended up frogging out and then restitching this little bit as well so that needs to connect and so pretty Okay, and then, other than 
those two projects. Um, the only other thing I worked on this week was the Baby Yoda that I am doing for my nephew Hudson's birthday. Um, his birthday is the 28th, so Thursday, I think his birthday is. Um, but we're getting together on Saturday. Um, we're going to have actually kind of a full day because he has a, a, a Zoom type party with a couple of his friends in the morning. And then, um, gosh, I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff. And then in the evening, Stacy got uh, tickets, I guess. You'd still call them tickets. It's, an, it's a Zoom. It's not Zoom. It's a, um, a online or an on the video, um, it's a circus. It's like a special circus. It's like a diversity, inclusivity circus. Like some of the acrobats are um, um, differently abled, like don't have, I think one of the acrobats doesn't have any legs. And um, But anyway, so um, I need to get this done before Saturday. <laughs> So, um, I worked on this a lot over the week, uh, finished most of his face. Um, as I said last time I showed this, there's so many mistakes in here and I got to the point last night, it's like I wanted to finish the face and then I wanted to put in the back stitching because I was just so afraid that when I put it in, he was going to look weird because of all of the, the counting mistakes and everything. And I don't think he does. I think he looks adorable. Um, so yeah, I mean, he has a foot that I have to do down here and then just the rest of the robe. This is, and I've said it before, it's deceptively a lot of stitching and it's, there's like 20 colors in this, which is part of what makes it like have a lot of depth and expression and everything, but also makes it, you know, you have to pay more attention when you're stitching because there's just so many colors and color changes and everything like that. Um, I also realized why full coverage. I like doing diagonal stitching with parking and not like a um, cross country type method because basically I did this cross country and my counting obviously stinks because I just have so many mistakes. Now it turned out okay with this. Um, you know, I was able to fudge it and I think it looks fine. It looks adorable. Um, I still need to do back stitching around his like hands and nails and stuff like that but um, I just wanted to get his face in and make sure that his face looked okay which I think it does um, but yeah so that's why I would not be a good cross-country stitcher because it would just be full of mistakes and it would drive me crazy so um, but anyway so I have to get this finished before next Saturday um, I probably won't be able to show it on my video because I have to frame it and get it, bring it on Saturday and my videos on Sunday. So um, I will try and remember to post a picture of it on Instagram um, when I get it done. But we at least got to see his face. He's pretty cute. <laughs> okay, so that was basically my stitching for the week. Well, basically it was. Um, and this week, um, this is a priority, get this done, and then I can work on the other stuff as well. So, unfortunately, Cuddles and Caffeine and Star Trek are the two that kind of um, have uh, missed out. Um, so, I'm going to have to put both of those in some other um, rotation or some other focus uh, month this year um, to get those worked on. <clears throat> but anyway, um, okay, so let's go on to haul. Um, don't have a ton. I have a little bit and some for me, some for not me. Um, one thing that I did finally get, I ordered this like way before the holidays, and but it was from England and it took forever to get here. <clears throat> but I got it this week. I got it on Tuesday, the day that I had, um, you know, the news of my mom. So 
Okay, so the story with this is I was on Instagram, and you know how there's all ads on Instagram and everything. And I saw something that's like, what's the new, you know, 2021 uh, desired item or wave of the future, whatever. And it was this felted, these felted flower scarf belt type things. And I immediately fell in love with them and I went and looked on Etsy. And I was in my phase of let's buy some stuff from Etsy sellers and promote small businesses and everything. So I found this one. Well, there's several, but I liked this one, and these things are super expensive. And I found one that had a more reasonable price, and then you're paying for shipping too, which I hate. But um, anyway, so it's it's these felted flowers, and I got these irises, um, just because I thought they were pretty. And they have these blue flowers that I really like too, and I might, after I have this for a while, and I see if I actually wear it and how it makes me feel then I might go ahead and um, get another one but so these are handmade felted flowers and you know they're basically on a string and you can use them as a decoration you can use them as a belt you can use them but what I see a lot is people actually wear them as like a scarf type thing or a necklace I guess you call it and you just kind of wear it you know and it doesn't really go with the sweater that I have on today. It would look probably really good on a black one. Um, anyway, so that's what it is. And I really like it. I think it's really pretty. Now it's choking me. <laughs> eh. It's like Audrey too. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's what I got, and I just think they're really pretty. I got this one from a shop called Sky Wool. Um, I just love. I, and then, I, of course, I looked up how to felt these things, um, how to do this, because I thought, oh, well, you know, if that's a thing, I could do it myself. Not something I want to even attempt. It just looks kind of very involved. Um, but anyway, so that was one thing that came this week um, and then happy mail I got uh, from my friend Tracy this also came on Tuesday so you know I was having such a difficult day and then I, I got fun stuff in the mail so that was nice and it was funny because Tracy was upset about this she had mailed this to me almost two weeks before I got it and she was sure it was lost in the mail and I was never gonna get it and so she was upset, but then I showed up and I, I was telling her, don't, don't worry about it because you know, I had that instance with the things from eBay that took like six weeks for me to get them and I'd already gotten a refund and everything. So I had a feeling it would show up and it did. Um, so she sent a bunch of ribbon with it because she knows that I like the ribbon and then end up using it for finishing. So this was, um, I showed you all the little, the bags that she made me for the holidays that all had like really pretty cat fabric and um, like this little pouch and stuff. I've shown you this before. But um, she had said that she had this other fabric that she got a little piece of, but it had bigger cats and she didn't know what to do with it. And I was saying, well, I'm working on um, things on my, my craft stand and if I have something that I put on the stand that I want to leave on the stand, I was putting like a plastic... Um, project bagged over it um, just you know to protect it and I said if I could get something that was pillowcase E as a protector that would be great so she made this as kind of a prototype she said if it works really well she'll make me ones that are nicer because this one isn't lined and yada yada it won't work with my new with this hoop because it's just way too big but um, it will work with my normal size big hoop which I think is what I'm gonna put lavender roses in and then I can use it to protect flower roses. So basically, she made me a, um, a project protector cover, so it doesn't, it doesn't tighten up or anything. It's just like, it's kind of like a pillowcasey thing. But she did put uh, a gusset, is this called a gusset? I don't know, she made the bottom um, you know, she put the seam in it so that it, the bottom is has thickness. And um, so basically, this is meant to just slide over a project like this. Um, 
and just protect it from dust. And she put like little, little handle ribbons to pull, to pull it down and everything. And so she used this really cool black cat baggy fabric. And then the trim of the purple one. So that was from my friend Tracy. She was having fun with her sewing machine. And hey, if I reap the benefits of her having fun with her sewing machine, I will not argue. So thank you, Tracy. I do love it and can't wait to use it. In fact, maybe I'll work on lavender roses a little bit today and then I can try out how it protects it. Okay, so what else did I get? I got um, two pieces of eBay fabric. Um, they are both a 32 count. No, this is 32 count Joblin in colorway lemon drop. So it's a very light yellow. Um, yeah, it's just a nice piece of fabric. Um, they were like this one eBay seller that I've bought from before. They were like 50% off. They were like under ten dollars, and it's a big piece. Um, and then this one is a 28 count jaslyn. Um, I know these different names just are different fiber content. This one is, it's super soft and it's a spring green. It's called spring, but it's spring green. Really pretty. And again, huge piece. Now, I, as I said, I have been in an organizing mode. I got a little uh, six drawer cabinet that I put together this week um, and I moved all of my DMC into it and um, a lot of my fabric. What did this teach me? I don't need to buy any more fabric. I have a, several drawers full um, and then I can't even put any of the white the white is in another box over there because this is just the colored fabric. I didn't have room for any of the white. Um, so yeah, stop buying fabric, Carla. But I like it. I don't need any more. Okay, what else did I get this week? So I was talking to Stacy. Um, when we were on vacation too, just so you guys know. So my two, the two best friends that I have, the two sisters, sisters by choice that I have are my friend Tracy that I've known since I was 15 and my sister-in-law Stacy who has been married to my brother for 12 years now. So I've known her for 13, 14 years, something like that. Um, so Stacy and Tracy and I'm terrible because I will call them by the other name and I feel horrible when I do that because I don't like it when somebody calls me by the wrong name. And when we were going on, when we were on vacation together with Stacy, I kept saying Tracy. And like every time I said it, I would like, oh, I'm sorry. And she'd be like, it's okay. I get it. And of course she gets it. She has three kids and she calls them by different names all the time. I do that too. But um, anyway, so I hope I don't ever mix it up on here. But this is for, okay, so the, the cover was from Tracy. And then this is for Stacy because she's the one that started cross stitching last week, um, the little thing, and is enjoying it as an alternative to the diamond painting, which she started recently too. So um, once she finishes the little Mario that she's doing for Hudson, um, she needs another project. So I went on Etsy. I'm like, I'm gonna kit you up a project. You don't have to worry about it, you know getting anything right now. I will kit you up a cross stitch project. Um, she's still interested in maybe doing needle point too, but she liked the cross stitch, the counter cross stitch. Um, so I figured I'd kit her up another project. So I, I pulled up a couple different things to show her and the one she actually liked the best was this, whoops, this one. So I went ahead and got it and I printed it out. And once I printed it out, I realized this might be just a little bit more advanced and I don't want her to get frustrated and then not want to do it anymore. So, um, just because this is bigger and it has like fractional stitches and stuff like that. So I got it. 
for next project. But for the first project, she also liked this one, and I thought this one would be um, just a little bit easier to deal with. Um, so I'm going to keep this up for her and bring it over next week. Um, and then I have some 14 count Ada choices that I'm going to bring. And um, I think... I think she's likely to pick this one. Um, and, oh gosh. Okay, so this is like a really kind of corally pink color. Maybe if I held it up against the white, it would show better. Yeah. Okay, so that's like a corally pink, and I'm going to give her a needle minder. Um, so she has that choice. And then there's more of a peachy pink one. Or peachy peachy beige um, and then I did have a couple over dyes so this is a um, under the sea uh, angelic which I really like but she's not as into purple as I am so I don't think she's gonna pick that one but I'm gonna bring it as an option and then I also have this piece of um, carnival which is a under the sea, uh, not under the sea, um, page release plus, which I think she also will like, but this one's a smaller piece, so I don't know if it's going to 100% fit, but uh, we can make it work if she wants this one instead. So I'm going to break all four of these, and then she can pick, and I will kit up the colors. Um, I think I have almost everything. If I don't, um, I'll just pick alternates, and it'll be fine. Um, we were only concerned about the light, the light pink not showing if she picks one of the pink colors. So I might, you know, bring an extra color, you know, or extra couple colors depending on the color that she picks kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to kit that up for her. And then that will go with me when I go over there next Saturday along with our huge things of yarn because um, I got a set of this too. So I think I'm going to bring both for her set and then... Oh, excuse me, gross, uh, one or two of um, mine, and we can try doing the finger knitting as well. So, those are plans for next Saturday that I have to prep for, and then uh, what else do I get? Oh, then um, I ordered some stork scissors from Amazon. Now, I know people talk about like getting like the really nice finger scissors or dovo scissors and to me the five dollar stork scissors that I get from Amazon are great and I just I like getting pretty ones and I have different ones and so I that's what I did I got a couple packages of four and there's a bright pink one so that one's gonna go she's, Stacy because you know she needs to have a good she was like hauling out some big fat scissors the other day when I was there and I'm like no 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 we don't want to use that with your with your cross stitch so she needs she needs a, a nice cute little pair of scissors that her kids can't touch so she's gonna get this one because she really loves pink so I got those I got these This might be a duplicate, so maybe I'll give her two scissors. And then just a plain black one. And then another rainbowy one. I have, this is what I have mostly. And then I have one with purple flowers. So, anyway, Stacey, if you're watching this, and if any of those you love, besides just the plain pink one, um, let me know, and I'll give you more than one pair. So you can keep them with multiple projects. Because, um, yeah, she's going to end up being a multiple project person. Um, she's related to me. That's just what has to happen, right? Um, I think that that's, yeah, I think that's it for today. Uh, that's everything I have to show you that I got. Um, and, um, yeah, and I told you my plans already about kidding everything up for 
Stacy, and then next week, um, I've already picked the charts that I'm going to use for February focus. Um, I'm calling it floral, floral frenzy, I think, or floral fantasy, or floral something. I don't know, something with flowers. So I have uh, some flower patterns picked out. And then I'm also going to um, have the cats in the rain because that's the style that I'm doing with um, Amy Sprinkle Steam Stitches. She was so cute. She did a quick, a quick video on Wednesday because she was so excited because Bruce Springsteen was going to be singing at the um, inaugural celebration. <laughs> um, so she did a quick video and um, anyway, so we're going to be doing the cats in the rain um, together. So if anybody has that pattern and wants to join, please do. It's always fun you know, to have other people putting pictures on uh, Instagram. And I'm terrible about it, so, you know, need to round out the pictures by other people doing them. Um, yeah, so I think that that's it. Um, thank you for bearing with me. I know I've been a little bit scattered this whole video. Um, but uh, keep my mom in your thoughts and prayers and... Um, hopefully next week I'll have good news for you, um, that, you know, nothing's gotten worse and perhaps things have gotten better and, you know, etc. So, I hope you guys have a great week, stitchy or otherwise. Um, until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye.